Maybe broccoli isn't everyone's favorite flower, but for the flavor and nutrition it can provide, it ranks high on my list. Let's take a look at a way to cook this green that doesn't make everyone want to leave the kitchen. Broccoli is a really versatile vegetable that gets kind of talked bad about and prepared poorly. So today we're gonna to show you how to take broccoli, clean it properly, prepare it properly, and make sure that you know how to use this really nutritious and semi-controversial vegetable. One of the reasons broccoli gets a bad reputation is from sulforaphane, which is produced inside broccoli and gives you that gassy smell. What we need to do is clean it and process it appropriately so that we don't get that odd sulfur smell that we get when we overcook it, leave it out for too long, or put it in the fridge and wait a week to eat it. So the first thing we're gonna do is use boiling water to coat all the little florets and make sure that we get a properly cleaned head of broccoli. There's two steps to cleaning broccoli. The first is getting boiling water onto the broccoli and to make sure that the broccoli is not being cooked, then we're gonna rinse it in the sink. But first, we're just gonna pour boiling water through the bottom and we're not gonna let the broccoli hang out in the bowl because that's where all the gunk's going and you don't want your broccoli to just hang out in all the residue that you're hopefully getting off of it. Now we're just going to take it over to the sink and rinse it out. The next step in processing our broccoli is making sure that we can use as much of the broccoli as possible. What I'm going to do is make really long cuts of the broccoli and leave this stem on. I want to make sure that we have plenty of stem. And when we're cutting the broccoli, we want to make sure to get some flat edges because we want surface area contact with the pan. I started to preheat the oven to about 450, 475, and I even put the pan in there. So when we put the broccoli into the oven, the pan's already hot, and that means we're gonna get a sear on the outside of the broccoli. So right now I'm gonna do a few more cuts just to make sure that we have a nice flat space for the cooking sheet to make contact with the broccoli. The buds, when they're in the oven, become little crispy flavor bombs. And what I wanna do is make a cut through there and get a nice steak, a nice flat profile for the broccoli to lay on the uh, cookie sheet. And I want these to get some air and I want them to be able to crisp up in the oven. But also these little guys that get contact with the pan are so good and so flavorful. So we'll just make a couple more cuts and we're good. This is also a great time to note that you can cut broccoli and throw it in the fridge and it'll be good all week. Like you do not need to process this right now completely if you're doing lunch for one and you just want a couple pieces of broccoli to throw in the oven, which is what we're going to do today, you just toss it in the oven. You toss these two pieces in the oven and that's all you need. And you have a whole bunch of broccoli for the rest of the week. There are at least two keys to making sure that broccoli is prepared appropriately when you're cooking it in the oven. One of those is heat because we want to make sure that the broccoli is getting cooked really quickly and at a high heat and sear to keep all the flavor in and to make more flavor, and oil, because oil is what's going to make that contact with the pan work. We're gonna take some neutral grapeseed oil and just pour it into a bowl, toss it up, and then we're gonna coat it in salt and pepper. Pretty simple. So, salt and pepper, pretty normal thing, right? Well, my partner, Ray, whose house this is, and whose equipment a lot of this is, and uh, she graciously lets us film in here, uh, got me this for our holiday present. And it is a cast iron grinder, and you can take herbs and hard things and just put it in here and just start grinding them. And it goes anywhere from coarse to fine, just as long as you don't stop grinding. And it has these little teeth on here, and it works really well for pepper. 
So I'm going to take just a handful or a few peppercorns and just kind of crunch them a little bit. Tap them around. And then we have ourselves some nice ground pepper of any size. And I just think it's a really cool little tool. Let's start making these things crispy. I'm gonna pull the cookie sheet out of the oven and you can, you're gonna hear how hot this pan is. We have our little cookie sheet and we're just gonna place all of these flat side down. And that's exactly the sound you want. You even got a whole sizzle thing going here. And we're just going to put these back into the oven. Now that we have our crispy topping, I'm going to pull the broccoli out of the oven and we're going to flip it over and then just kind of cover everything in this wonderful dressing. You can see the little bit of color that we have and you can definitely see where the pan has given us a nice golden brown. So I'm going to kind of group these together a little bit and then just spoon on our cheesy oniony dressing. It'll be nice and crunchy. And we want some on the pan too. Because that just makes little cheesy bites. Then we throw it back in the oven. So we pulled the broccoli out of the oven and we have these really nice crispy bits that are paired with our little crispy buds that we have here too. And you got really tender stalks and we're matching that all with a creamy, rich, vegan mac and cheese that I'm gonna show you how to make in a future episode. I'm gonna try a little bit of this and see if you can hear the crunch that we got on this like cheesy, crunchy dressing for the broccoli. Oh, that's great. And the broccoli. 
not a big crunch, but tiny little crunches that happen in your mouth. So thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. This topping is just one example of some crispy bits that we can put onto our roasted veggies. Cabbage works really well with this too, and so do a whole bunch of other earthy vegetables. I absolutely love the crispiness of this topping, but we don't even need the topping if you want to keep things simple. Just some salt and pepper and it's going to be great.